Definitely in Sydney, something is going on. I mean, why would 10 fish all just die? All the same species, across two different fish rooms, with experienced breeders. I would love to try and work out what the reason is. Like if any of you guys know why. I can't wait to breed these guys. I really hope I can. Aren't they a stunning fish? Look at those colours, those fins. I mean, seriously, look at these guys. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. First off, I just want to thank some new subscribers to my channel. Since I posted last week's video, which was my full fish room tour for 2021, I've noticed a bit of an influx in the amount of subscribers than I usually receive. So that was really nice to see, obviously. And I just wanted to thank you guys for supporting me on my channel and clicking that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. I do hope you find these videos useful and informative. And most of all, I hope you find them enjoyable. So thank you once again. So if you haven't seen last week's video, I do suggest you probably watch that first. And you can do that by clicking the link up here and you can watch my full fish room tour for 2021. Uh, but if you did see last week's video and you're a keen eye observer, you may have noticed that there was a fish that I showed in my intro that did not appear in any of the fish tanks that I uh, talked about. I'm actually quite embarrassed by this tank and I really didn't want to include a bit of a downer in my full fish room tour, even though I probably should have because uh, that's the reality of running a fish room. Not everything is a success but I thought it'd be more interesting to do it as a separate video because it is an important topic that I think isn't really talked about that much. So last year uh, in my full fishing tour for 2020, uh, you would have seen in part five of my full fishing tour, uh, last year I broke the video up into five parts, uh, that I showed some electric blue rams and absolutely stunning fish. They looked incredible. I purchased four of them. $25 each, not exactly cheap. If I could get these guys to breed, I'm gonna recoup my costs because these guys would sell, they looked stunning. As you can see here, like the brilliant electric blue that these guys had and the fins that uh, one of the males had was really, really beautiful to see. And my cousin Adam purchased six. They have a bit of a stigma, I suppose, in Australia. A lot of people do uh, struggle to breed them and do struggle to find uh, really good quality bloodlines. Basically, the fish melt away and they die over time. So Adam bought six, I've bought four. If you've been on my channel for a while, you've seen Adam's full fish room tour. You can, you've seen the fish that he keeps, the fish that he breeds, the pride that he takes into giving his fish the best life he can, he can give them. If you haven't seen his full fish room tours, you can watch the whole playlist right here. And I suggest you really uh, see those videos because he's really got a stunning fish room. And you've seen the fish that I breed. Uh, you see how well my fish do, uh, how often I spawn them. I feel I kind of know what I'm doing when it comes to breeding fish. I put my heart and soul in raising quality fry for other hobbyists, you know, in the hobby. So I went all in thinking, yep, yeah, this should be okay. I think I can um, hopefully breed these uh, electric blue German rams. And a few months in, they're not putting on any weight. They're actually losing weight and one dies. Adam's first electric blue ram died uh, one month after he purchased the six, and then he lost one a month every month for the next six months. Uh, they just melted away. No matter what you do, no matter how much you feed them, they were not putting on weight. And we were feeding them frozen bloodworms, frozen mice shrimp, live Daphnia. I was feeding them live Daphnia, frozen Daphnia as well high quality pellets. I wasn't feeding them pellets. I never got them to eat pellets. Adam successfully managed to get them to eat some pellets and flake food. I never got them to do that. And yeah, they just melted away over the course of a few months. Now, I don't think that's a coincidence, right? Like I've got one left from last year. So I think I've done pretty well to get them to last over 12 months. Adam lost all, of, all six of his within the span of six months. I recently lost the beautiful male about a month ago and now I'm on my last one and it's not looking like it's got a lot of time left either. I was really target feeding these guys, feeding them, you know, twice a day uh, when, when I could. You know, immediately, I'd, as soon as I get home from work, I'd feed them and then I'd feed them a few hours later before the lights turn off. So they were getting two feedings a day. Adams have been working from home for the last year because of COVID. So he was feeding them multiple times a day, trying to get them to put weight on and they weren't doing that. They were just melting away, basically. I was using this product by Seekum, uh, acid regulator that drops the pH down to about 4.5 to 6.8. Uh, 
uh, depending on uh, how much you use of this product and I didn't notice any difference with that. I think maybe the use of RO water might help uh, but I don't have an RO unit. I used to have one when I had in my reef aquarium but I sold that years ago. So I'm not sure what we're doing wrong. Um, I, I think we're giving it our all and really, you know, really trying hard to grow these guys up and get breeding pairs out of them to spawn them. When I purchased them, I asked the fish store where they purchased the stock from. They did tell me that they were from a fish farm in Sri Lanka. Now, I know nothing about this fish farm in Sri Lanka. I've never tried to Google where this fish farm is or try to uh, find out where it is. People are spending their hard-earned cash on these fish because they're beautiful. They put them in the aquarium at home and then they die within a few weeks are lucky to get a few months out of them and then it leaves a bad taste in their mouth with keeping fish because they're going to just go straight out of the hobby and then they're going to be disheartened and not enter uh, into the hobby for a longer period of time because they've made an investment in an expensive fish that's, that's $25 per fish isn't exactly cheap it is cheap compared to marine fish saltwater fish but uh, for freshwater fish for general people in the aquarium hobby who just want to have a nice tank in their living room that's a lot of money to spend on one fish it's just really disappointing that we have potentially really bad stock entering australia and i just thought i'd mention that today and that's why i didn't show the the aquarium in my fish room tour because it's really just disheartening to see and i hate looking at the state of the fish that it's in uh, as soon as I come and get in front of the aquarium, it comes up to me and it just wants to be fed and I, I feed it and I target feed it. I am so patient with this fish, slowly, slowly, little, little bits of brine shrimp at a time, making sure they were eating everything that they could. Um, and then when they weren't showing interest in the brine shrimp, I just stop. Uh, and no matter what I did to try and put weight on those fish, they would not put weight on. I have heard stories from people in my uh, cichlid club that have bred heaps of different types of cichlids. Um, almost all the different types of cichlids they can get their hands on that come through our club. Uh, but when it comes to electric blue rams or German rams, they can't and they've tried several times. Not just the ones like me where I've purchased four and then tried and they've died. Obviously I'm making assumptions on the fish farm in Sri Lanka. Uh, I know nothing about them. Um, maybe they do raise their fish really well and I'm just, I just suck at raising uh, South American cichlids. But Adam has bred numerous types of epistogramma and um, successfully spawn those uh, but when it comes to these electric blue rams like me he's failed to keep them alive and he actually uh, had less success and you know they all six of them died within the span of six months and then to hear other stories from people in my club that have bred almost every type of cichlid you can imagine to hear their stories where they've tried multiple times over the years to try and even keep them alive let alone breed them um, and to fail multiple times. There's something going on with um, the rams that we have in Australia. So if you are a German blue ram breeder in Australia or an electric blue ram breeder in Australia, please get in contact with me because I'd be really interested in getting some of your stock and giving them a go again. I really hope you found it informative. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks, Ace, for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.